Greetings and welcome everyone to a surprise Tuesday edition of Into the Nexus, the podcast all about heroes of the storm. I'm Garrett Weinzerl, here as always with Kyle Ferguson, and boy do we have a show today, Mr. Kyle. We do. Oh my goodness. You know, sometimes uh, Thanksgiving makes us do weird things like mailbags or theory crafting. That is not allowed today because it's all PTR patch time. It makes us do all sorts of yeah nutty nutty things like uh, record a podcast last week where we spent where we spent uh, a lot of time going ah they'll probably not add Hogger as a standalone hero that'd be that'd be that'd be weird there's there's mercenaries there's a lane catapult minion clearly it would just be overlap it it would definitely this isn't a team that time and time again has proven to have a relatively strong art department that is good at making uh similar monsters have very different and unique silhouettes that make it easily identifiable in an isometric battler a lot of that uh tunish stretching going on but mm. more on that more on that later because we have something to discuss we had a oh. bet and i have no idea who won because technically it's a PTR, which means it's not releasing in the week of Shadowlands, but oh, it was damn. announced on Shadowlands Day. So I don't know who's in the right here. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm obviously in a position to argue that since it's not an official launch, I win. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Be good, yeah. But... Honestly, if you wanted to make an argument for this being a wash and we both basically don't win, uh, which would not be as fun for the audience. I say we both win. You know, the, the season did get extended a week. Okay. So that happened. You won. But they announced a new hero and put up the PTR on Shadowlands release day. So I win, I think. So instead of us so both we, losing, we both win. Yeah, I like that better. So we both so get, get your... to tell each other to do something. <laughs> exactly. All right, exactly. I you get it. your Malganus free card, and I get to tell you what to play. Okay. Cool. Perfect. Sounds Perfect. wonderful. I'm glad that's decided. I, I like Happy show. Thanksgiving to everybody. I know it's like yes. American Thanksgiving and Canadians. You already had your Thanksgiving, but this is the year of remote everything. So as far as I'm concerned, if y'all eat food on Thursday, you're celebrating with us. Oh, it, it just got delayed a week. That's. That's perfectly on par for 2020. Yeah. And by the way, I'm not shaming anyone who's doing one of those fasting uh, diets. And if you do that on Thursday, you do you. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> may, may, stay the course. Stay <laughs> Every time I hear course. about that, though, I just get hungry, even if I'm currently eating. Just I like, do want to know if this... I just want someone to jump in and be like, would this be the BlizzCon hero? Was this going to be the loud, bombastic Dude, surprise? it has to be, right? It absolutely... So, <laughs> big news, by the way, everybody. Hogger's been announced. Um, Hogger is coming to the game. Uh, and here's the storm. You can go play him right now on the PTR. That is still a thing. I know a lot of us don't play over there very much anymore. Um, and it's, honestly, it's easy to forget about because we kind of just get our patches to the live game now. We don't get our, our patch to the PTR first and then to the live game. Except when there's new heroes. We Last time we were on the PTR, Kyle, was with May. And now here we mm -hmm. are again, taking, taking Hogger for a spin. Literally. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and uh, where was I going with this? Um, yeah, so that's... that's Blizzcon. Yeah, that's the big news. It had to have been, right? Like, now, last year, it was so... We found it so strange that they did the Deathwing announcement the week before BlizzCon. But I, I know you didn't go last year, um, and, 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 we, and we definitely had these conversations back when BlizzCon happened back in 2019, but as a refresher, it didn't feel like there was a lack of fanfare at BlizzCon. Because, uh, you know, we, we were we were really tinfoil hatting. It was like, oh no, as here's the storm. Are they, are they really just putting it out to pasture? They had to announce their big, ridiculous hero the week before, and they got put down in the basement at the Blizzard the Arcade. Uh, the Blizzard Arcade was amazing. It was hopping. It was constantly full of people, and the longest line every time I was down there was to go play Deathwing. So, I, I, I you know, whatever the cases were, to me, there still seemed to be a ton of hype surrounding Heroes of the Storm. Um... So, yeah, I, but this is the kind of thing, like, Hogger is so, it, this is like, I don't know, it, it, it's like laser focused on Blizzard fandom, right? Like, because you have to really be into Warcraft to, like, even know why you should be stoked about this. And, and, and 
like I guess the point I'm I'm getting at is that like I feel like most people with a passing understanding of Warcraft, they know it's a thing, and and maybe they've seen a poster or two or a billboard when an expansion's coming out. They probably have a vague notion through osmosis of what Deathwing is and who Deathwing is, right? But Hogger is an almost two decade old in joke. Like this is. This is a a cut for that only players of World of Warcraft, only players of World of Warcraft on a specific uh, faction because this leans pretty alliance heavy. Like really, like they get the joke and they're in on it. And so I don't know, man. Like this to me seems like the kind of thing that had to have been planned to get announced at BlizzCon because it would have just been it would have been great. I feel like this would have landed really well and folks would have went off and would have been raucous cheering and laughter and I would have I would have. I'm just picturing it in my head. I think it would have played real well. I think it would have too. I mean, naturally, it's it's easy to imagine what may have gotten put aside for BlizzCon, being that it's now in February and online only. And hey, we might see another hero announced then. Who knows? But you got Varian, you know, cinematic Varian. He's walking through the forest. It's a beautiful morning. Sees a pile of trash on the horizon. Doesn't think anything of it. And exploding from the trash with, you know, with Vlira and maybe, uh, you know, other, other friends nearby. Who else has been, who else has been animated already that they could just use in a cinematic? <laughs> Who's ready uh, to go? Kael'thas. Kael'thas got his own, uh, I mean, most of them have gotten their own release trailer. Are you, are you, are you, you're not talking like the Ragnaros uh, variant cinematic. You're I'm talking, talking like the Ragnaros, in, yeah, yeah. Where, oh. like, they had, they had variant done, we so why not have make Vlira in that style? No, 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 that's why I'm, that's why I'm wondering. Who oh, the, else the, would be there like... There was the, the, the diva... Uh, trailer. I don't think there was any <laughs> Warcraft characters in that in that cinematic. Yeah, I don't. I don't know uh, who else is. I it, cinematic. Well, and oh, Wind, oh, Brain, well, uh, Brain, uh, Brain, we, we, Alex, Alex Straza. Alex Straza is another Warcraft character Alex, we've seen yeah. in that style. Yeah. So Varian, Greymane, Alex Straza are all walking through the woods, reminding me very much of Super Smash Bros. Donkey Kong uh, being surprised by Banjo Kazooie, because that's what this is. This is a character that became. A meme, basically, because gnomes would raid him at level one as an event, Mm -hmm. publicizing online that this was going to be the gnome battle versus Hogger for the weekend. And it would also lead to things like running of the gnomes, because you had to run a pretty long way to even get to Hogger in the first place if you were starting out in the middle of Dunmoreau. Yep, yep. They they acknowledged this and put him in the stockades where he became famous yet again in his own way. According to this video, he survived that, broke free, and is now a cartoon of himself, which is perfect for a knoll, who are horrifying, and one of the most savage fantasy creatures there are in the world. But World of Warcraft always has its own spin on things. Yes. Yes, it does. Yeah, I, I love that you bring up that gnolls are kind of horrifying. If you think about a knoll in... in- in as close to realism as your brain will allow you to, they're terrifying. They are literally hyena people. They are bipedal yeah, you, hyenas that wear clothes and wield weapons. Oh, yeah, and hyenas are freaky beasts. Yeah, I love the big personal uh, hyena fan. I'm sure every, that's what everyone came here for. Uh, glad you <laughs> enjoyed my hot take on hyenas. You may now leave. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, the, uh, this whole, the whole, it, it I can, again, I can see it playing out of my mind all too well. So I hope everyone you enjoyed this uh, this mental journey to the BlizzCon opening ceremony that could have been in 2020. Picture it. Picture Just it. Picture yeah. it in your brain. Picture it in your brain, Kyle. Um, but let's you know we're we're already talking about him. Let's 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 dive into it. Let's dive into this. Let's talk about Hawker. Uh, he's a bruiser. And uh, I, I'm sh- certain that you've had a chance to try him. I, I gave him a try in try mode over on the PTR uh, just today. Um, and I got to say, uh, I, 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 think, I think it's love at, uh, at first tornado spin. All right. As a, as a Sonya player, I'm not too surprised. I'm, I mean, I would like to say that you're um, you're probably generalizing us Sonya players a little bit too much with that comment, Kyle. The tornado of Hogger doesn't work a damn thing like Sonya's spin. It, it's how you wish it worked, though. No, no, not at all. <laughs> no. Not not even a little. Um, Sonya's spin works exactly how I w- how I would like it to. Um, 
Hogger is okay. So I guess before we get into nitty gritty, my my TLDR on Hogger is that I really like him and I think he's super unique and kind of blowing my mind with how much of a terrain manipulator he is. What is what is your kind of takeaway? Your instant read on Hogger. He is very wacky and has a kit that definitely could cover many roles. He's labeled as a bruiser by Blizzard, which is very safe. He's got an unstoppable. He's got self-regeneration. He's got a stun. But they've all kind of got these interesting bits to them. It's not the kitchen sink, which I think is the only place they're comfortable declaring something a tank nowadays. This could be another bruiser tank if we get into that position of it, particularly with the terrain manipulation. And it's not the character that you would think is going to be doing that sort of terrain strategy business, but it works thematically. And for me, it really comes down to how executable this is going to be. Is the chaos that Cogger is going to bring with the knockbacks, with the stuns, with moving his own body around in weird ways, going to function for other players? Are you going to make them miss their skill shots? Are you going to be predictable where you end up? Are you going to get focus fire during things right now we're saying are really, really powerful? Much like when Malthiel came out, we were all terrified of Tormented Souls. He would go, that was loud, and he was walking around, and... Eventually, we all just went, oh, kill him. Focus fire this guy while he's being noisy. That that wins. He might be overtuned, though. So everything we're going to talk about on this kit today feels really powerful. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, that's that's how I felt. Again, just try mode. out. Didn't I didn't sit through the the Q boss that is trying to to get into an actual game on PTR or whatever. But um I am impressed by the kit. So let's talk about it uh, right up with, let's kick things off with uh, the way every hogger will be manipulating the, uh, the terrain and, and not just lock behind one of two options of heroic, which we'll get to in a minute, um, which is one of two pieces of his trait, specifically the activatable portion of his trait loot horde. And the way it works is you, you throw what the game refers to as a pile of junk. Kyle, it looks like uh, it looks like a crate you might find in an old camp in World of Warcraft, as a matter of fact. It's just a yeah. little crate of random garbage. Um, and it, it deals damage in a small area. But what's more and much, much more interesting about this is that it acts as terrain for, for five seconds. So for five seconds, you have added a square piece of terrain to the battleground that previously did not exist. Um, and then after that five seconds, you might be wondering, hey, what's up with the, uh, with the duration? Uh, it, it kind of explodes, and a scrap of meat is left for Hogger uh, that only Hogger can collect and restores 3% of his max health every second for five seconds. This heal feels really good, and on top of all of this, uh, the cooldown is only 20 seconds, which sounds a little bit long, but again, you are literally adding terrain to the game. And then what's over, you get to heal. For a rather dramatic amount. Yes. Yes. But, you, you, that, that's, is that the first place your brain goes when you hear Bruiser? Because when I hear Bruiser, I go, how do I heal? It was my first question with the Gazzle rework, and it was my first question with, with Hogger. That's a good point. I mean, Kira's got it, but it's, it's smaller. This is heal over time. This is more dramatic. But there's a big uh, thing we need to talk about here. That Loot Horde has been designed on a grid. So when you throw this pile of trash, it'll either in a choke, it'll be slight to the left or slight to the right. There is no perfect scenario you need to worry about here. Or in the negative, there's no perfect scenario you can pull off. So if you want to create body blocks with this in a choke, Stitches, Deathwing, our big, big boys, Asmodan, are going to get stuck. Their models are too big to now fit through this new choke that Hogger can create. But our smaller characters are not going to fall to just not enough space barely and have mm. pathing issues. Mm. Yeah. 
Uh, before we move on from Loot Horde, I want to give a shout out because Brew is actually hanging out in our chat and has confirmed that the Loot Horde uh, model is actually made up of the actual items that Hogger dropped from his World of Warcraft loot table. <laughs> <laughs> so, Shadow Gems, really? Tiger's Eye, Tough Jerky, and Bracers. Uh, you might okay. be able to spot if you look closely, which is All amazing. Right, and thank you yeah. for sharing that with us, Brew. <laughs> That's fantastic. And now, now I'm jumping in game to see it and... Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I see the low-level gems. Mm -hmm. Yep. Bra mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The green bracers. Nice. Very some, nice. That's some good stuff. That is an amazing but, detail. There's some interesting things about Hogger. Uh, in particular, in the try mode, when you first select him, he goes, Solo Q. And I'm like, oh, Blizzard? Are you are you being coy that only a toon, only, only a rascal like, like Hogger would request solo queue or are they teasing something that, that could be too that could be too or no that doesn't make any sense there's no in joke for his queue ability to call no, it a solo I, queue I, no I, I, I don't i don't think so i don't think whatsoever so. i'm digging i'm digging Wait. man i'm i'm digging for those deets <laughs> he, he's got he's got another trait though and it's called rage so, but he's he's not really your classic warrior. In fact, it's worth mentioning that you may picture Hogger in your head with the shield and the axe, but they've gone with the big ball and chain. Yeah, he has which a flail, is, basically. Yeah, but as a Warcraft 3 player, that's the elite gnolls you would find in the mercenary camps in the woods. So for the aesthetic of, you know, maybe being a, a champion of the gnolls, I'm really happy they went that way. And it's got a lot of... So it got a lot of goof to it. It's got a lot of momentum. It really makes him unique, particularly when he gets into his big slams and how he does his business and his attacks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't want to move past Rage too much because it works very much like it does in World of Warcraft, and I'm happy to see that. Um, you gain Rage by taking damage or dealing basic attack damage, and then his uh, basic attack cooldowns refresh 1% faster for every two points of Rage. Uh, after three seconds of not gaining rage, however, it's going to decay, and it's going to decay quickly. So you're kind of incentivized to stay in the fight. No mana. No mana Correct. on this guy. No mana. So Just we are rage. working on a cooldown reduction based on rage. You do not spend rage either, so this is not a sonya e mechanic in that way. Uh, it's, it's easy to be poked. As Hogger, you are going to try to get into very particular situations and angles to pull off your various reposition abilities. And during that time, you are absolutely going to take some damage. So I'm not too concerned with his inability to maybe land auto attacks constantly in a fight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, again, uh, probably worth highlighting again because chat room is mentioning it. Um, just make sure no one's confused. You're not spending rage for your abilities. Uh, yes. strictly cooldowns rages well as uh, Zavix in the chat room mentions it battle momentum on steroids exactly exactly yeah um let's get into the actual uh, abilities you're going to be hitting with your keys uh, starting with staggering blow on q uh you're going to swing uh hogger's chain weapon in a wide arc it deals damage to any enemies hit in this arc and it knocks them away um, it's kind of a, you know, a, a from, from left to right, or I don't know if it's actually left to right or right to left, whatever, but it's a sweeping motion. And if you're caught in it anywhere along this travel, you're going to get flung away. Um, if you collide with terrain, a thing that this hero can create it on a whim, uh, you're going to be dealt additional damage if you get hit by staggering blow and then stunned for three quarters of a second. You're also going to grant Halger 10 rage if this happens. Um, this is on a 12 second cooldown. And it sure seems like there's a, a D, you know, to throw your loot horde out behind your attacker and then immediately Q to smack them into it, uh, sort of combo going on with this hero. Definitely. The loot horde, when it lands, deals some damage and displaces them. If you land that perfectly, you get the damage, push them towards you, then using staggering blow, push them back and get that longer stun. At higher levels, you can add an 8% giant killer to this and increase the duration of the stun. And that's pretty darn cool. Yes. Yes, it is. This is, you know, we, we tend to look at new heroes and compare them to, well, what's already out? What is this, what, what is this line up with? 
with heroes we already know and have played and you know the positional nature of getting your stun and damage value out of staggering blow reminds me of your diablos or your Orioles of the world you do have your sight uh, much like your hanzos and diablos in the world so every single bit of terrain including your loot horde is going to have those ghost lines and boxes around them to help you land those good stuns yeah yeah it's uh, some good pieces of ui here on uh on old hogger uh then we get to the w which is called easy throw dynamite uh you toss a boot <laughs> full of dynamite uh, it has a one and a half second delay um and then it detonates and when it does detonate it deals damage to any enemy in the radius and it slows uh slows slows them by 30 percent for two seconds so 30 percent slow on uh two second duration there um however this ability instantly detonates if it lands directly on an enemy hero and it grants hogger 10 rage if that happens and when it says lands directly it is not the radius of the explosion itself the little boot chock full of dynamite has its own much much smaller radius of where it lands and that's what you need to hit directly on an enemy hero to get that instant detonation so it's it's a much more difficult to land skill shot but again you can create your own terrain. You can swing people into your terrain, the, the terrain that you created to stun them, and then you're going to be able to line this up pretty reliably. Probably about the size and missile speed of something like Nazebo spiders. So not awful, but definitely more of a more of an edge to it if you can land it. There's quite a few talents that interact with this, which are very cool. The coolest one that I've seen is you put down the boot, and if you use your staggering blow to sweep across it, you launch all the dynamite out of the boot, creating more pockets of dynamite, as it were. There's also talents <laughs> and quests associated with this. There's lots of cool ideas. This talent or ability of all of them makes me the most nervous. What, what makes you nervous about this? As a bruiser featuring so many different aspects and ways to play, manipulate the battlefield, and use their kit. I think that he should be weak to poke. But you can get rage and maintain your rage by using the easy throw dynamite. So I hope that we don't enter a world where easy throw dynamite is the go-to build. Because I think it's a great recovery build. I think it would be an amazing way to say, whoops, I early picked Hogger. Yes, I'm powerful. Yes, I have all these cool abilities, but I still need to have my weakness. If we can shore up his entire weakness of not being able to participate in the battlefield by giving him easy throw dynamite, and when these things splash out, hit a hero directly, other talents cause additional dynamite to spawn and stuff like that, you can enter kind of a kill fast living bomb scenario where the enemy team doesn't really know how to deal with all that damage. And when you reach maximum rage, that's when you get into hog wild which is his E. Yeah, yeah. Um, you uh, become unstoppable and you spin towards the direction you just targeted, that you just sent yourself. This looks so much like Looney Tunes' Tasmania Devil. Uh, it clearly, it has to be inspired by, because that's what oh, this looks so like. I, it is yeah. extremely stylized. This is not Sonya holding her weapon out spinning. This is a whole new graphic where Hogger becomes engulfed in a cartoon tornado and goes off in whatever direction you just targeted. And at then, first, sorry, go ahead. At first, you're, I think my brain definitely went, oh, I, maybe, maybe he should be in there somewhere. And you think about it, and it'd be real noisy, and it'd be really weird watching that guy spin that hard. So I'm glad they went with just the tornado for readability. Yeah, it's actually, like, yeah, it's super readable. Um, there's like no confusion about who that is, what's going on and kind of how it behaves, which is good because it behaves very, very strangely. Uh, so you turn into a tornado, you gain unstoppable, you just start spinning and you can no longer change the direction that you're going. However, you will ricochet off any terrain that you, you hit before the duration of this ends. And if you do ricochet, completely refreshes the duration of this ability. So you can kind of pinball yourself around at as, as much as you want, as long as you're, you've lined yourself up in a way where you're constantly ricocheting off of walls. Um, 
How, wh- what was it like for you when you first tried this, Kyle? Because the first time I did it, I did not realize that I could turn it back off again. <laughs> <laughs> and I may have ended up dying to a wall on try mode. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I was just like, oh God, this is terrible. And then I, after I died, I tried it again. I was like, oh, oh, I can, I can end it prematurely. I mean, it's a lot like uh, those mobile games you may have played, Bubble Trouble and things like that. There is always an angle at work. Mm-hmm. And no matter how perfectly you line this up between two straight walls, eventually the angle you cast that will take over and you will go flying out of there in a time. But if you find one nice straight wall and then you put your loot hoard adjacent to it, you can get going pretty hard in there and it's going to deal a good amount of damage since it is increased based on the current amount of rage you have. So Hogger is able to double soak by walking in the lane, throwing your bomb on the lane, throwing the loot hoard on the back of the lane and then moving forward as long as you have the rage for it and bouncing back off your loot hoard all the while being unstoppable. This Seems crazy. Immediately, everybody's brain went to, oh man, how can we really break this? We need to get an entomb going. We need to uh, catch him in a zombie wall. We need to do area crater. From tests people have done, you go through player-made terrain, sadly. Oh so you, no, I was going to say, you, you, are, you and I, our favorite zen way to play, here's a storm, just the two of us when we're not streaming, we're just trying to have fun, is to uh, uh, double what used to be called specialist in quick match. And I was just like, Kyle, bring your Nazebo. I'm going to bring my hogger. We're going to have some good times. Apparently, it doesn't work that way. Do, though you do interact with your own loot horde, so at least that's functioning for your own combos you're going to set up. It goes through in tomb? It's, that's what the test showed. That now, there are is issues. Bummerific. We don't know. There's a number of bugs. Uh, there's a number of things going on. That's what the PTR is for. Like you can easily use uh, your abilities to knock yourself off the map and then wander freely through the woods if you so choose. So w- maybe those aren't true. But there's also things like Kira, who's able to go through Tassadar walls with, I believe it's her hookshot ability. There, it, it's not always 100% clear as to what abilities work where. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sony has a lot of shenanigans with her spear as well. Um, yeah, there you go. Yeah. I mean, Chavern brings up a good point, though. You can still close off the Entomb with Hogger's Trait, which is mean and terrible. And I can't yeah, wait to absolutely. do it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. No, that, that's very, that's, I mean, there's some real cool possibilities. It's interesting that things like uh, Diablo Aria work in those situations. So I don't know if that's true going into the future. And of course, it takes a lot of resources. You know, you can, it just like uh, happens in our everyday games, you can put Last Rite's Malthiel, Seven Sided Kyrazim, and three other heroics into one tank. You just spent everything killing one tank. So these ideas are cute, but maybe not necessarily broken, even though they feel like they could be. But the damage on Hogwild is rather dramatic, particularly if you can get to that top rage. And there are several abilities, such as uh, getting rage based on spinning. Uh, that is a aggro range level four talent Increase Hogwild's radius by 25%, and each enemy hit generates one rage, increasing to three against heroes. That right there will give you rather dramatic lane clear using that loot horde thing I mentioned. Or maybe a nearby wall. You're unstoppable for the whole full duration of this. If it is broken, broken, it might be a good thing to put a max duration on that unstoppable. You're bouncing around for 20 seconds. That's enough. Let's call it at five seconds of unstoppable. You already got out. But the fun thing about it and the really rewarding thing about it is the range isn't insane. It's long, but it's not insane. So if you wanted to run for it with your unstoppable, you actually favor aiming slightly sideways, hitting a wall and resetting that duration, resetting that distance and riding out further. Yeah. Yeah. You can do some kind of cute things with this. I mean, I mean, there's there's, speaking of cute, there's one I'm really excited about. Uh, This would be pummel at 13. Enemies hit by Hogwild are slowed by 10%, stacking up to five times, so 50% slow. Heroes have their spell power reduced by 50% for three seconds. So if you are Hogger versus Chromie, you could unstoppable yourself all the way to the back line, hit her 50% reduction. That's awful kind to the rest of your team. And now you're Hogger with all your abilities able to mess with Chromie. Mm, access the Chromie, reduce the damage of the Chromie, kill the Chromie. But... 
we might just focus fire him. Like, this is all really cute, but if you see a hog or unstoppable, he's not invincible. Yeah, and, not- and also, like, how much is the damage reduction on the Chromie the win more? You're all, you've already accessed the Chromie. She's probably already panicking and not landing it attacks. And there's other talents there, like, give yourself 60 armor if you so choose, or Bloodthirst that allows you to now heal based on the damage dealt from basic attack, staggering blow, and hog wild, which is probably what you Sonya's are going to take. <laughs> but until that point you are not healing by spinning you are completely isolated locked into whatever health is being targeted down mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. oh we haven't even gotten to the medallion thing either the unstoppable is is important again yes well, more yeah, important we will talk about that again. for sure yeah all right let's talk about his his, his heroics uh he has two no, no, nothing weird going on here uh, get it at level 10. Um, your first option is Hortipult. You're going to launch an empowered loot horde. This is in addition to the loot horde you come out of the box with on your trait and you activate by hitting D. So you have, if you take Hortipult, you're going to have a second piece of terrain that you can introduce to the battlefield. Um, and now, and now with that sort of grid system at work, you could do left side, right side and complete the complete clog of that choke point. Yes. Yes. Um, and so you, you launch an empowered loot horde. Also, you're launching yourself, Hogger. Hogger attaches yes. himself to the loot horde and then fires himself catapult style into an area. It deals damage. It slows enemies by 50% for two seconds if they're hit by this. Uh, and then Hortipult itself, like the actual loot horde that comes out of the Hortipult, lasts for 20 seconds. It decays... Uh, more rapidly while Hogger isn't nearby, but every 10 seconds Hogger can get a chunk of meat out of the loot horde. So if you, you can get two more meats out of it. There's a lot of self healing behind this There's a lot of shenanigans with terrain manipulation behind this. Um, and it's a good engage. Yeah. So graphically it'll look exactly the same. Your previous loot horde, you create a zone around it about the size of a blizzard that has a little meat symbol. So we'll call that the meat zone. And if you stay inside of it, you will receive that meat without having to pick it up. Yeah. It just kind of fires it off to you. Yeah. This, this range is about site range and you can see immediately why they did this. If you were, let's say holding some sort of objective and hog was like, no, thank you. Enemy team 20 seconds. You cannot enter through this area. That would be pretty broken. So you have to stay in the zone in order to take advantage of that 20 seconds. Otherwise, you're looking more at like um, five. I'm not sure what the exact math of uh, rapidly decaying is. Still a lot of benefits to that, though, especially if you were entirely blocking off a particular access point because then it's only heroes on the enemy team that have some way to get over that are going to be able to access you immediately. There's also a great talent at level seven called Garbage Fire, which sets your loot horde ablaze, causes it to slow by 20% and deal damage in the area. You know what I have to Uh, say about that, Cox? What? This is fine. <laughs> it's, a, it's a dumpster fire ship for sure. And uh, I, I like stacking those a lot. Portapult, obviously the one I'm most excited about, particularly with the D- Diablo-like stuns of uh, our staggering blow. But there's also a extremely sane heroic that if you were double soaking or at least doing an extended solo lane, I bet you your team would really like if you showed up with. Probably. It is, however, on a 70 second cooldown, whereas Hortipult is on 50. So it kind of feels like, oh, I just, this is always up and I get self healing. I can, I, can, I can have fun and do shenanigans and do the things that me personally, Garrett, this is me, Garrett, talking, not trying to put brains in, or th- thoughts into your brain. But uh, this is the things I'm really excited about with, uh, with Hogger. However, he also gets Shockwave, one of my favorite warrior abilities, although it works a little bit different here. Yeah, uh, poor Blood Hoof, I guess. What was that? The blood, the, uh, the blood hoof, uh, you know, our Torin, yeah, our Torin, uh, Bane or Cairn, <laughs> uh, Cairn. I don't, I never, I want, I always said Cain for years in my head, so I don't want to say the first name. I always avoid it. Mm. But uh, a Torin chieftain getting walked on a little bit. But it, I, I, I retract my own joke because at level uh, one, you can get an ability on Hogger called On the Prowl, and that didn't stop us from getting Gray Mane. Mm. Fair, Nor the fair. three other abilities named Blizzard and such like that. <laughs> anyway, the way Shockwave works is your other option of heroic on Hogger is after a half second kind of wind up, Hogger slams the ground. It sends out a Shockwave in a straight line. If you're playing World of Warcraft right now, it's a it's a cone effect. That's not how it works here. It's a straight line effect. Um, however, there is 
a, a more of a circular shape at the very beginning of this line. It's kind of where Hogger brings his weapon down. It's kind of the impact area of the of the animation itself. And if anyone is stuck in that circular part of the targeting reticule, they're going to be stunned and take extra damage. The stun is one and, one and a quarter seconds. And then uh, if you're hit by just the line portion of it, uh, it's it's less damage and a shorter stun, but it's still a three quarter of a second stun. So it's basically a impale with a splash on the front from a new barack. And that's a good way to put it. That's really nice. I don't know why you wouldn't want to bring this to a team fight. Oh, I know why. Because Hortapult is really, really fun and cool. It's extremely fun and adds, uh, it gives you two times the coolest thing about Hawker, which is his loot crate. Yeah. Loot hoard. Sorry. Not sponsored. I, I will. I, <laughs> it's hard not to. I, I will have to control myself. But I see Shockwave becoming the number one here. Though not necessarily because of 20s. For your level 20 on Hortapult, you have Secret Stash, which every two seconds, Hortapult launches an easy throw dynamite. And I've heard this is talented as well. And it's flying at pretty good rate, which means it's likely to hit, as well as those chunks of meat that are flying and now are flying more often. Uh, for Shockwave, it's rather tame. So it kind of... Gives me the idea that they expected us to look at Shockwave, but they don't want to make the 20 so powerful. Hitting enemies with Shockwave reduces their armor by 15 and grants Hogger 20 Rage. Now, that is 20 Rage per hero in my testing. So that's a good amount to get you going, particularly if you're doing that off-soaking. Level 20, right? Oh, no, Hogger soaking. Like, probably not happening. But you show up to a team fight, you lead now with Shockwave, get all the Rage you need before going Hog Wild, that could be a great opener for your team as well as yourself. Mm, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, Shockwave is just like good old fashioned CC in here's the yeah. storm. Um, it's funny. You're liking it. I'll bring in all your Anubarak analogies. Cause I was just like, Oh, it's a, it's a gentleman sundering from thrall. Sure. But sundering displaces making it all the less viable. That's why it's that a gentleman way. sundering. Oh, I, I see. A friendly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A, a gentleman, uh, I was thinking for the enemy side. If Thrall was going to, you know, sunder at a, a southern ball, uh, it would be Shockwave. Sure, sure. Yeah. Now, this is, of course, competing with what everyone's really excited about, which is no control. Another level 20 talent, which allows you to hog wild heroes. And it it's a seeker missile, if you will. You select a hero, and when you hit them, you now become seeker, hog wild bouncing towards another hero and pinballing between them over the course of the duration. That's absolutely nuts. It's wacky. Uh, it could deal a lot of damage, particularly if you have yes. that maximum rage. Yes, it could. <laughs> That's bananas. Huh. The last one is anger management. Increase hoggers maximum range by 50 and basic attacks generate five additional rage. So you're now at 10 rage per basic attack. But from what we know about bruisers and the way this guy's looking, it's it's difficult for a bruiser to auto attack repeatedly. We got our ranged auto attack. Sure, you're going to auto attack. You'll probably be the target of most blinds. We have our tanks with auto attack abilities like Diablo. And he gets away with a lot of auto attacks because no one's going to put, well, most people don't put CC into the tank because you're trying to stun somebody else and blind them. But Hogger feels like he'd be ripe to receive those blinds and other CCs. So my mind with talent builds immediately goes towards, well, solo lane, double soaking, and a really nice build that I like with extra meat out of your, out of your loot box, <laughs> loot, loot hoard, uh, the aggro range for lane clear, just cool things like that are going to allow me to clear fast and therefore show up to a team fight with my shockwave with greater speed. Mm. I dig that. It, seem, it seems like, though, this Kale Fosse kind of easy throw dynamite build might win out because it pokes, it's much safer, and then when you're at max rage, you could go in. The final build that is kind of in the, in the kit would be an auto attack build, and it just doesn't seem like a good idea. No, I, this really is, seems like an ability-focused hero for sure. No, yeah, no mana costs. Why not just cast everything you can? Yeah, just keep going. Um, it's it's interesting. You, you, you try taking Merc Camps. I I found it to be slower than Rexar. 
Oh, you know what? I didn't even, I, I got all excited about lane clear, but no, uh, I can absolutely see that. Easy throw dynamite's not going to clear up anything. Uh, staggering blow. Let, let me actually, let me walk Hogger over here and see if I can staggering blow into a wall these guys. You do get the stun, but oh, that's pretty tiny. And then I guess there's maybe like Garden of Terror where you could line up a real nice hog wild and bounce around, but that duration is looking pretty darn long. I agree with you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it just it, it took a it took a long time. I mean, you can survive through it. You've got meat, but uh, you're not going to be out of there anytime soon. So I like that you're focusing on the double soak ability because that seems like a more efficient use of Hogger's PVE, you know, nature. Well, and this could all be absolutely insane. I'm talking about, you know, lane clearing, using Loot Horde, and then running towards it with Hogwild and bouncing back over it. Yes, that definitely places me back towards my wall again after clearing. So I'm slightly safe. But like your, uh, if it, let's say that Hog Wild is a good Merc Camp ability, you just spent your primary escape, your your Unstoppable, and maybe your Loot Horde on top of that, in order to clear a Merc Camp, and that that's no good. You got to hold on to your things like Zombie Walls if you want to be out there on the field. Yeah, yeah. So you know, uh, we both like our solo lane. And Kyle, are you thinking Hogger's going to get added to your? your regular roster? I think so. I think he's got traits uh, like Thrall that I really enjoy. The The Hog Wild isn't as demanding as something like Hanzo, you know, lining up those exact angles because you are just more resilient and you can take care of your own health. I, I'm curious to see how the terrain manipulation works in the real game uh, with, with human error and all that sort of thing. Right now... AI and basic pathing takes care of you pretty darn quick. You might get slowed. You might have to take the long way around a loot horde, but creating a full blown block is actually quite a bit harder to do. Mm. Yeah. To, to me, like the just reliably kind of landing your, your like the, the, what looks to be the obvious combo, which is D behind them and then Q them into your loot hoard that you just threw behind them. Um, to me, that just like, I don't know, reeks of wanting to control the front line because there'll be larger targets and more reliably, like easy to hit into your loot hoard and that sort of nature. And I think that's a great rhythm to think about for him. Maybe we help peel that front line a little bit, all the while creating rage that we're going to use to dive into the back line with Hog Wild. Uh, easy throw dynamite may be pressuring that back line as we do, and then going for the kill at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Where my head's at right now is like, you know, week one, I'm on Hogger going into a game. I think that the question I'm going to constantly have in the back of my head is can I get a stun off my Q without using my trait? Because if the answer is, then I'm going to like, I'm going to go in, I'm just going to knock on the wall, get him stunned, and get started, and then maybe use my trait to try and block off their exit rather than just using it as a combo piece. And that's, I'm just going to, I'm going to try going into the games with this kind of binary choice to make. Yeah. You know, do and I, that's do, a great way to start any hero. Yeah. And see, see how it kind of goes from there. Um, but if you can't tell, I am very on board <laughs> for Hogger. I'm very excited about this hero. Yeah. And I think that uh, most of the critiques coming across the web are actually from, his design and people, of course, who are still waiting for things like Grom. But we all can't have our own heroes at the same time. Uh, it, people are concerned that in the video, we really zoom in on this model. He is so busy and so elastic, though. When you see him in game, my fears about him being under render, I, it, they disappear. Something about the way that video was shot getting close on Hogger because he's so animated looked kind of odd. In game, he matches the universe. Oh, yeah, no, that's fair. I mean, he looks, he's like weirdly well clothed. I actually, I, I don't know if they changed this model for the stockades or not, but it's like not what I think of when I think of Hogger. But yeah, th that happens a lot in Heroes of the Storm. I don't think Hogger is unique in that way. There's a lot of uh, hero models or just skins where you kind of look at it in the character select screen and it looks a little strange. But then you get into the game itself where we're looking at everything from this isometric point of view and I can't think of anything in game that really sticks out to me as glaringly strange from the actual game camera. I think it, maybe for me, it's just the yellow shoulder pad. I, I feel like it's red in my memories. That's the only thing my brain went, hmm, 
But he's also got like a whole pirate motif they gave him. So, you know, if you want to be pirate hogger or shipwreck hogger, as they call it, that is an option for you. So the the hogger art that I always think of from here's a, or, or, uh, from Hearthstone has the yellow shoulder plate. It's actually, it's like okay. identical, um, which is what I always think of. And the original model, it's super low res, Kyle, but I, I hate to, uh, I hate to, to. Oh yeah. It it's, it's like, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to see if I can drag this over into our, our yep, um, yep. Here we go. Here's like OG hogger for the video audience. And, uh, I mean, that's a super low res shoulder pad, but, uh, it's, it's gold. It's yellowish. It, yeah. Yeah. He's got kind of a red shirt under it. Oh, my goodness. He is hideous. Just, <laughs> Just the <laughs> like, pits, man. Never winter nights, like just PlayStation 2 hideous. Yeah, so you know, if we go, if we bring in the new hawkers, so yeah, they know they just did an up res version of his clothes. Like it's yeah. it's dead on. I guess I'm just not used to Hogger looking so good. I used to him looking like a busted piece of 2005 trash. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, the side by side. You know, I would. I. I. I'm. I'm going to, on your behalf of you, Kyle, retract any any naysayers about the look of this because the in-game hogger model is incredible. Now looking, at, I look, agree. Doing the side by side, holy butts! That's great. Look at the way they painted the fur. Mm, so good. So good. Sorry, I audio listeners. Game. We just we needed to take a second to really drink uh, yeah, in the that- visuals. But and, and again, like it, he had a shield next, yeah. But that ball and chain is 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 really rocking. I don't believe I, yeah. he had a shield. I don't think he's ever had a shield. Did he not? My goodness, I'm just ins- inserting all sorts of things in my memory. He had one axe. One yeah, axe. one axe. Look at that, huh? Yeah. I've I've never thought of. I do think of Hogger as as shield adjacent because of his Hearthstone card. He spawns a bunch of taunt dudes. He spawns okay. a top goal at the end of every, every turn. <laughs> shield to Jason, sure. Um, so that's where the shield for me it gets connected with Hawker. But um, but yeah, I just think that big old axe. That's uh, that's kind of it. But um, yeah, I'm over the moon with this. This seems really solid. Hits like it was gonna be a thing for BlizzCon. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, thank you, team, for not holding on to this until February when the digital BlizzCon is happening. Yes, uh, agreed. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. This is... Um, dude, I mean, how many times have I asked for this? How many times have I said to you, Kyle, man, I just want I just want some monsters from Warcraft or Starcraft or Diablo. I want just rando monsters to be the next hero. Not, not some named main character that we're all going to cosplay at the next BlizzCon. I, I want... Just give me... An actual Murloc, not murky. Just give me a kobold, and this is damn close. Yeah, it's it's a, it's probably the most famous knoll ever, but this is this is exactly what I wanted, dude. I get to just go be a mob in World of Warcraft. I like it. Great yeah. job. Yeah. Um. So, uh, before we get into the rest of the PTR patch, because it's not just Hogger that uh, is getting added. We want to thank those of you supporting us over at patreon.com slash ITN, especially since in the States, this it's like the week of, you know, saying thank you for things and also <laughs> stuffing yourself full of stuffing. Um, but we thank the, the cook and all that, you know, the, the, yes. the, the, the bounty of the harvest. <laughs> yes, indeed. And we also uh, thank you for supporting the show so we can go buy stuffing. Um, so check it out. Patreon.com slash ITN. If you want to support our program here, you'll get access to the patron only discord and get to sign up for our monthly patron nights where we play games of heroes of the storm with you. Um, we also get other perks like an ad free version of the show when we have ads and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I thought it might be fun to look back, Kyle, since this is something that Patreon lets us do, um, and take a look at who our oldest patrons are. And we Hmm. actually have five patrons, that signed up in 2014, which is when we launched the Patreon, and haven't left. So I, I figured I'd, I'd pull their names and give them an extra super special thanks. So, Alebeard, Daniel K, Declan H, Richard P, and Cheesy Bob, the real ITN patron OGs. Wow. Thank you for sticking by us for this damn long (laughs) my god 
What, what did uh, what did World of Warcraft get? Like statues? Do we need to make statues to send send them out? But, oh boy, I don't want to think about how much that would cost. Um, <laughs> oh, they, 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 this here's Patreon Classic, though. Here, like the, these, are, here's the what OG, we do. I'll, yeah. um, I will forgive Alebeard for always wearing a town hall shirt whenever I saw him at BlizzCon. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have nothing to forgive Declan for. Well, or Cheesy Bob. Last time I, uh, one of the last times I hung out with Cheesy Bob, we went to uh, Trader Sam's out at uh, at Disneyland and had some amazing tiki tiki drinks. Yeah, nice. and, and Richard P. Daniel King. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, I don't know. Wonderful folks. So thank you, everybody. It's cool. It's yeah. awesome. I, I forget that I have this functionality and go take a look at things like this. So given the week that we're in, I want to thank those of you who've been here for a really, really long time. So if you'd like to join the names of folks who have been here for a really long time, head on over to patreon.com slash ITN. Uh, now let's keep going, Kyle, and talk about the Nexus anomaly because it's going away. There is no anomaly anymore. Yeah. Not only is there no new anomaly replacing the Gladiator's Medallion, but the Gladiator's Medallion is going bye-bye. And I like their comments. Uh, for the most part, they kind of just said it wasn't a clear enough win. And they said that there are things they liked and there are things that they didn't like about this. Which, you know, selfishly, I think aligns with our comments on this show. Absolutely. You and and I they even have... address those comments directly that have been in the community. Like, could we make it once per game? And it just didn't feel good. So they're backing out. And that... It, it, it's a simple thing. It's easy for us to go, we did a community. We, we badgered them into a corner. But they've already shown they're willing to make these kinds of changes. I'm so happy they experimented. They were willing to try. And at the same time, willing to say, cool. I hope they learned something. I'm, I'm more interested to know what their decisions in the future are going to be regarding Unstoppable. Because there, there, there are lots of things I liked about it, like supports having an unstoppable button for themselves. That was really nice. I don't want them to stop cleansing the team. And we know what happened when they could cleanse themselves. They didn't use it on the team. But it, that was a good feature. But tanks all over the world rejoice because our beautiful engages every five minutes will not be ruined. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm rejoicing as Gazla, who would like people to actually get stuck in my freaking bomb. Please. Sure. And thank you. Um yeah, yeah, I, I like it, man, and, and and honestly, like to since we're it looks like we're not getting a replacement anomaly, we're maybe kind of done with anomalies for a while. I'd like to like give a hat tip to the kind of the whole concept of it because I mean, at the end of the day, it was just they were updates to the game, right? It could they could have easily done what they did with anomalies and just not given it a moniker, but even though like in a sense it is just like it's a name and a term they came up with for a very specific type of update to Heroes of the Storm, I liked that. I liked that they defined what it was because uh, weather anomaly uh, uh, outside of what I'm about to say, it made me come to these changes with an open mind. So it was like, oh, it's a thing that may or may not stick around forever. They're, they're trying. They're trying to kind of upset the apple cart. Of course, weather anomaly came and I was uh, actually doom saying, but that aside um because and and honestly i think the the medallion is to me i'm, I'm gonna kind of come away from it i think the medallion was my most positive experience with anomaly that didn't make it that didn't stick around because i did there, there was a long portion of time that the medallion was here that i really enjoyed it that i it, it shook things up it made it interesting and i didn't mind having it around um but yeah the last few weeks i've been more or less done with it we learned the situations it was most useful in. We stopped panic hitting it before dying, which meant it was available for those situations like your Gravo Bomb on Gaslo. And those sort of dramatic playmaking moments is where a lot of us felt we had our carry potential in Heroes of the Storm. So I'm happy to see it go. I love the concept, just as you said. The idea is crazy. How crazy, a video game doing something for fun. But it's crazy that they invented a word so that we could all digest and calm down if something were to be temporarily changed to test something perhaps for the future. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'll miss them. I have a feeling, though, Kyle, if they have a good idea for something they think would be anomaly worthy, that that 
that this wouldn't stop them from bringing it back. No, I don't see why not either. Uh, it is a freeing of resources too. Of, of course, this is, you know, in, it's all in-game engine kind of stuff. So, you know, I'm not going to say Anomaly's gone. Let's restructure hero rewards. That, that's not the same people. But I am curious yeah. to see where this effort kind of ends up. So do I. We used to only get these sorts of updates once a year, right before the holidays, for the most part. Yeah, we 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 got we got on the show started referring to it as the holiday update because it felt like a big, massive shift to the entire game would come down, and we'd have to wait until after the holidays to kind of see any sort of course correction adjustment uh, from the team or back in the days of HGC to see pro players play on that patch and kind of solve the puzzle for us. Um. So so here we are with a with a year chock full of kind of game morphing changes. Some that's are are here to stay and others that are just gonna be a memory from here on out. But I liked it. This is a fun year and, in, in, in that in that way. And there is a there is a note here that says we will, however, continue to iterate and pursue other ways to improve here as the storm. Uh, that's all well and good. We've heard that. But and we'll release those updates when we feel they are ready which suggests there are other ideas in mind. They just don't want to stick themselves to that season role anymore. I dig it. I'm okay with that. I'd like to, I'd like to see regular adjustments in other areas of the game. If we, if we could, not that it, we even have an idea if it's even that one-to-one, but. No, oh, and, and they put out when it's ready, the changes to Warhead Junction. If they included that in this patch, we'd all be going, Oh, here come the map updates. So the, the, the future is free, but I do want to remind everybody that we have an example of the sort of things they can work on now that they are beyond anomalies. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of dig the tunnel on Warhead Junction. It's dangerous as hell. You really got to keep your wits about you, but it's also fun to take advantage of yourself. It's fun. Yeah, I agree. It is, it is the kind of wacky fun that a big map like that suggests and uh, my mind of course you know, being uh, a spoiled child on christmas is like black heart do black hearts bay now <laughs> i oh, miss what do you got for me there i miss mines i want mine we've back. all got our we've all got a project map <laughs> fair fair uh are you ready for some heroes changes that are going to be coming to the game because they're on the ptr right now Yes. All right, oh, well, by the way, that's worth mentioning a second time. Uh, this is all PTR, so medallions will still be sitting in your game for another week. Most likely, unless for some reason the patch gets delayed. Which has happened before, but it's been a long time. Yes. But we're, we're working into the assumption that this patch is heading next week. Uh, all right, heroes changes that will be coming to the game. Brightwing, hypershift, just getting nerfed. Bonus healing reduced from 10 to 8%. That's it. They are not buffing up anything else. They are just nerfing Hypershift. According to the dev comments, Hypershift is dominating Brightwing's level one talent choices. Uh, they also mentioned her rise in prominence. Um, however, what makes me scratch my head uh, is that they say, quote, we don't believe she is greatly overperforming at this time. So why are we doing this is my question. Um, and, and I guess to be slightly more constructive, Kyle, um, here, here's why I get cranky looking at this. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, you know, that just historically, I'm not the biggest fan of just nerfing and doing sure. nothing else. There's kind of, oh, you know, there's times where it's appropriate. Um, and that's fine. Uh, but I usually would prefer to see other things kind of shored up or, or molded, uh, differently. Um, you know, at a glance, at the statistics available to us, you know, if I go over to hot slogs, right wing is sitting at a 51% win rate. Does not seem like she's, she's problematic. She goes higher at higher ranks, but that happens pretty much across the board because here's the storm mixes leagues. So the higher leagues tend to have a slightly higher win rate. Um, you know, so this is where I would like the devs to include internal stats. Um, I don't need it with any sort of regularity or anything. I'm not asking for you to do some big new initiative where we're constantly seeing internal stats. But uh, it is something I have seen them do in, in Hearthstone before. They kind of, you know, if they start kind of talking to the community about a certain thing that got changed, the community doesn't quite understand why. It is, it is, it's not frequent, but it's also not uncommon for them to tell us what an internal st statistic is for a specific deck or a specific card uh, to kind of illustrate the point of why it's a problem. Um, because this just, I don't know, this seems unnecessary to me. 
The, the other level one talents are just not as interesting, period. Let's make them more interesting than just nerfing this. Well, it's got a 77% pick rate. And a 2% health change here, teleporting in on someone like Johanna, you're looking at about, what, like 75 health? It's not insane. And it will not stop you from taking advantage of the other part of Hypershift, which is nearby enemy minion deaths reduce the cooldown by 1.5 seconds. Yeah. So I will still be doing Hypershift. I, I get your point. You'd like to see the other ones shored up. It's, it's not they the only to... other option either. Chat room's talking about baking in, which which I, I didn't want to hammer on because I feel like I've mentioned bake in, in the last four episodes that we've talked about problematic talents. But at, at the end of the day, like, that's the other place we go with stuff like this. It's like if it's taken that much, maybe the weakness that it is correcting is too much of an inherent weakness on the hero's base kit in the first place. Well, the targeting here isn't for our at home games necessarily where perhaps we take greater advantage of something like the second half of hyper shift with that cooldown reduction, because we fly in, we heal you. And then Genji goes, Thank you, I'm off. And you go, oh, I'll cover this lane now, okay. Wait, Genji was in lane, you now replace him. That's probably a better scenario in the first place, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah, but th I mean, there's plenty of team fight usage as well. Just team fight heals and you stay in it and you keep going and the cooldown reduction helps and whatnot. So I don't know. I mean, it, sure, but when you talk to tournament players, hyper shift is the go-to because it gives Brightwing the heal size that makes her compete with other healers that they might take otherwise. And right now, of course, that other healer is Stukov in a lot of their minds because it's, you know, a coordinated environment. But these big, big heals, I mean, we're looking at things like ancestral heals that they need to worry about, the throughput of Ana that they need to worry about. This shores up Brightwing to compete in that environment. So they nerf the correct part. I disagree. That's fine. <laughs> if your argument is uh, you need this talent to be competitive with however many heroes, uh, healers you just listed off, that, that I don't know. It's, to me, that's my point. Without this, she can't compete, whether it's coordinated or uncoordinated play. So you would like to see, you mentioned you didn't want to say bacon, but let's, let's pursue that. You would like mm -hmm. to see the overall health of phase shift increased, or do you want to see the second half with the minion deaths? I think I'd like to see the overall health of phase shift increase. Okay. I mean, we're already, we're, we're already pretty high. I mean, what, what do we, what do we add? A uh, 25% total health? Yeah. But on that line, I mean, hyper, there's again, hyper shift, the cooldown reduction is worth something. And without it, the cooldown is noteworthy. Yeah. So. Not, it's true. It's true. I mean, we're also, there's also a thing with you know, Pixie Charm just not being all that valuable when people can coordinate to cover lanes and get the right person to do the mark. Dude, at the yeah, right time. bribe talents are, oh, I find them so boring. I hate taking, uh, have I ever, have I ever mentioned that I hate taking bribe? I cannot stand it. Really? I mean, yes. it's, it's just so I don't know. Any hero that it's on, I would rather have one of the other talents. I, I, I agree with you, uh, mainly because I'm bad at it. it. It's not the thing I'm paying attention to on healer. It's the Merc camps I want to steal are in dangerous territory. I often get to four stacks and then am stuck in sort of situation where I can't go excuse myself for that amount of time to go deal with that. Pursuing a Merc camp on Brightwing requires that I use something like Pixie Dust, perhaps, to propel myself fast enough to get to that Merc camp and still participate in the team fight that's breaking out. And then I have to phase shift back out of the new dangerous position I've created, which means I've maybe spent phase shift poorly. And that snowball effect uh, I mean, greater polymorph now is not as fun as it once was, but of course it was the leaming of CC. It was insane previously. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, I don't know. It's just something about, collecting stacks of it and whatnot it's just i don't know to me i think i think it's I, it still very much feels like a generic talent despite the fact that we've gotten unique versions of it for multiple heroes and i don't know it just bores me I mean, it, it, to me this is just not uh it, they have absolutely nerfed the right thing it's just not in your territory 
you know, like a report comes out and there, there's no more Ferraris available. And I'll be like, no, damn. <laughs> oh. How I dare was, they? I, I How dare they stop making invest. a car I could never afford in the first place? Ah, oh. well, thank you. Man, one. Th- you know, I see you, Kyle. I see you pandering to me by trying to wrap up uh, a winning argument in an anecd- in a in a car analogy. But uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm exposed. Maybe we should move on. At the end of the day, it's it's minor, but it's just, it's it's still just the kind of thing I look at. I just go, yeah, it's, you can maybe probably not looking at the source of the issue here, which is you still kind of need this talent. I agree. I will continue to take it. Yeah, I will too. Uh, let's talk about Imperius, who got a base health nerf, 3%, roughly, removed from his base health. They always, you know, bring health regeneration in line with whatever adjustment they make to health, and they did so as well here. According to the devs, Imperius is still a dominating pick. They also called out that it's even worse at higher ranks of play, so they're slightly reducing his overall power, while also buffing his Blaze of Glory to help it compete better with his level 7 talents. Uh, Blaze of Glory over there, uh, getting its damage increased from 135 to 150. It currently is enjoying a 6% popularity pick rate on hot slogs with a uh, 45% win rate. Well, uh, Imperius does one thing. You may have heard of this. It's called stabbing forward. Mm. And when he lands said stab, things need to die rather quickly. Well, apparently, Kyle, 6% of Imperius's also sneeze at level 7 and click the wrong talent. <laughs> It is a cool idea. I mean, your bruiser, how long does this last? Uh, oh, this is Blaze of Glory. Well, what's the pick rate on Holy Fervor? Uh, I don't have it up right now, but uh, give me two seconds and I'll let you know. Because Solarian's Fire leaves a line of scorched earth along its center, exploding after two seconds and dealing damage. This explosion benefits from and consumes Valorous Holy, Marks. Holy Fervor is a... Uh, just beat out Blaze of Glory with a 7.5% popularity pick rate. So yeah, people, basically all Imperiuses are taking Flash of Anger. Yeah, I mean, Holy, that's one of those where maybe you've become confused. You're, you're, you're thinking, oh, surely my Imperius needs more lane clear. Maybe I should take a Merc camp. I'm going to go an auto attack talent here. Uh, but again, stabbing forward and doing your one thing is what you're best at. I love Blaze of Glory because it consumes the Valorous brand mark. It's really cool against Deathwing who is absolutely going to get hit by it and often walks away. And it's, you know, isn't, you can mark him with your stab, but you're not going to actually stop him with the stab. Yeah. He's, he's not a Swiss army knife, right? He, he's a single tool for a single job. Yeah. Highly, highly specialized. That's it. It's a tough thing to compete with because flash of anger gives you the damage you would want on one target and the shield that gives you the damage you would want when you skewer multiple targets in that shield. It's just the imperious go to, yeah. Uh, I, I agree. It, it, it's the right. I think the health is the right thing, though. We, I don't. If we just kept beating up Flash of Anger, it's just going to feel too bad. And as we talked to with AZ Jackson, he wants to avoid that. So nerfing his health, not his shield on his rogue. Again, we talked about that last week. Uh, is the right call. I like this a lot. Yeah, I. Uh, I don't mind Imperius, um, but there, you know, it's. It kind of depends on the quality of the Imperius. It depends on the draft that the Imperius is part of. I have had games where he just feels absolutely unstoppable and other games where he just feels like he's one of the most killable heroes in the game. So uh, it, it kind of depends. I think he's very draft dependent and skill dependent. I like that. Uh, I don't mind living in a world where he's a little easier to take out because the games where he is difficult, where it does kind of feel like, oh, what the hell do I do here? It's because Imperius is living with like a fraction, a sliver of health. And it's not really of his own doing. I mean, what he walks out of some situations that feel insane, sporting what 10 armor, a shield that, yeah, is, is big, but to me, it feels like it's a shield. It's, it's the most obvious thing you notice in the middle of a fight and Imperius starts dying slower. It's like, Oh, he's got a shield. now. how does he have this? But yeah, you know, could be in, insidious, man. It could be a combination of the two. Plus, you know, it's it's a team game. There's heals coming in. Who knows what's happening? A good hero to target, though. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, Jaina. Uh, the dev said that they've heard consistent feedback that players would like Ice Fury 1 to give a benefit to non-heroic heal, uh, targets 
And they like that idea, so that's what they're doing. Ice Fury Wand at level 7 is going to get its functionality adjusted to where it now reads basic attacks against chilled targets deal 50% bonus damage and reduce the cooldown of Blizzard by one and a quarter seconds. This is doubled against enemy heroes, which brings it up to how it currently reads, which is 100% more damage to uh, heroes and reducing the cooldown of Blizzard by two and a half seconds. So this is just all around a better talent now. Yeah. It's, you know, there is nothing wrong. People like to call things, you know, bad talents, trap talents. They're going to teach players wrong. I don't think there's anything wrong in the world with a low leaguer thinking to themselves, maybe I should lane clear. Maybe I should invest myself and, and, and learn to enjoy a hero that can lane clear well. That's, that's I, I want more of you guys climbing the ranks and being a part of my my player pool. So now competing with Ice Flows and Ice Lance will be Ice Fury Wand. Yeah. I don't think uh, the, the masses will take it. No. But I do like it. And I believe we're one of the ones who requested this. I do believe it has come up before. Because it's level 7. I mean, I've got it up right now on Hot Slogs. It's got some decent talent diversity. This is not this is not looking a damn thing like what we just looked at over on Imperius. Ice Lance is running away with it. It is the most popular with a 42% popularity. But Ice Flows is contending that at 34%. And Ice Fury 1 is still taking more than 20% of the time. This is just stats from the last two patches. So... You know, there's decent diversity going on there. And and yeah, I just double down on everything you said about taking Ice Fury Wand. Feel free to, you know, get rumbly about it if you want. But I think there's some times where you should consider this talent. It's better now. Yeah, no, no, don't do Stormfront. Increase the cast range of Blizzard by 75% and its radius by 30% at 13 when you have access to Icy Veins and Ice Barrier. But you know, I, for the majority of players, I frankly don't care. And I'm happy that you're going to stay safe. And cast your primary spell. Just don't put it on top of terrain. That's where I'm going to lose my cookies. I'm trying to think what the analogy is here. Listen, Kyle, we both have the same Ferrari. I'll drive mine the way I want. <laughs> that's that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> as long as it's not in the shop the whole time, we're good. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Jane would be more like a like a Jaguar, a slightly more reliable luxury car. Okay, I, I don't really know the difference. Uh, one is Italian and extremely expensive, and one is British and still expensive, but not nearly as expensive. So, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, Sonia. Sonia is up next, which always just uh, makes me pucker parts of my body uh, at times uh, whenever Sonia gets mentioned in a, uh, in a patch note. But according to the devs, <laughs> they're, uh, they're buffing some of Sonia's underused talents, which already makes me perk up and go, oh, Oh, is Giant Slammer one of them? And it is, Kyle. It is. Um, but before I jump ahead to the last damn talent that they adjusted, um, they just called out W talents specifically. They said that W talents have been slightly underperforming for some time, so they're hoping to you know, give it a little bit of help here. And so Shattered Ground at level 4, is gonna, uh, they're going to increase its damage from 100 to 125% of Seismic Slam's base damage. Uh, Ruthless at level 13 is uh, now going to, the health threshold for bonus damage is going to be increased from 33 to 50%. And then uh, Giant Slammer at 16, this is one I'm particularly excited about, is getting a damage increase. It's going from one and a quarter percent to one and a half percent of max health. And uh, it's been a while since I talked about how much joy it brings me taking Giant Slammer into a Deathwing, but as De- Deathwing has become a big foil in my games lately, I see it happening again. So I'm happy to, I'm, I will gladly, gladly, take this buff. There's been quite a few Sonyas in the CCL and they have a 77% win rate on the hero. Not once have any of them dealt a seismic slam build. Not even in the, in the winning departments or the losing departments has someone invested into that build. Yeah, even even in the games where I take Giant Slammer, that's it. That's the only W talent I'm taking. I just want the extra damage uh, on you know chonky targets that I'm trying to burn through. Um, so I would not even rec- as a a proponent of Giant Slammer would not recommend going a full W build. Do you think it needs to compete with the way people play? Hurricane and then Life Funnel and all that. Do we need a Giant Slammer 
health steel equivalent talent that competes? Um, because you're bruiser, you're off tank. Like Sonia is disruption in the fact that she might absorb damage that otherwise would kill somebody else squishier. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I would kind of. I would not, personally, I, like in a perfect world, I would still like W build to be something that's underpicked, but I would like to see it like picked with some regularity. I would really like it to be. I, I like. I think I would like it to be that you are intentionally giving up some additional self healing for a lot more potential damage output, but right now that trade off isn't worth it. Mm. And so I, I would like to see them like take this damage and, and push it even further uh, to where where you know maybe we arrive where there is a Sonia build where Sonia is a bit of a glass cannon damage melee, which would be interesting. I don't again still don't know if that fits. Or why, at the end of the day, yeah, you mentioned it. We're picking Sonya for a pretty, pretty specific reason. In our games at home, I almost never do the uh, whirlwind build. I'm, I'm all over the place. I'm doing like shot of fury and battle rage, um, because it just kind of just makes Sonya constantly go in pickup games. But um, that's fair. Maybe in a stricter drafter environment, particularly Zool, like uh, that Sonya is certainly going to be picking up some of those hurricanes yeah. and whatnot. Uh, we're talking about giant slammer here, which has a higher pick rate than rampage, which kind of works back into what I was saying about hogger. I do feel like we might need to overall look at our bruisers and think about auto attack talents and whether or not there's something that should be on a bruiser kid. Give, give them great auto attack. Sure. But it's, it's a volatile lifestyle being a bruiser. And rarely does a melee bruiser get to auto attack. Yeah. You know, the, the Twin Blades variant, as much of a meme as people like to make it out to be, I think is the closest thing we're going to achieve to the fantasy of a pure auto attack bruiser. And I, and I think that, it, like, in a, I think in a weird way, that's what I would use as the baseline for wanting to invest in like auto attack talents. You know, I don't, I don't need Sonya's auto attacks to be as fast and irregular as, as variants, but I need to be it, it to be closer to that than it is to say Augers, for example, you know, we were talking about Augur does not have the fastest auto attack in the world. I don't know off the top of my head, but it seems slow in my, uh, in my try sessions. Um, it just, it's a side, pro- it's a side project. I, I do want to make it clear that lane clear is fine. Zul blue build, Leoric, uh, well, you, you can't invest in his auto attack build. But, and I'm not, I'm not saying there's any issue either with things that are attached to auto attacks because that's a counterplay in my mind and I love it, like Empower Sulfurous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sonya's just, it's, it, it's, it's the, I think the issue with Sonya, because her auto attacks are fine. Like, she has a good auto attack speed, right? The issue is that, like, one of her, one of the buttons on your base ability makes it so you can't auto attack anymore. If you're whirlwinding, you are getting zero value out of any auto attack talents you took, right? So, well, in particular, rampage strikes me as kind of weird. Yes, you increase your basic attack damage by twenty five percent. Basic attacks reduce the cooldown of ancient spear. It, it, there's this World of Warcraft fantasy that I could sell myself on here, where I'm gonna like wail on the tank and then be like, "Aha!" Cooldown reduction and back to that well, chromie and get her. Um, I, th- I well, okay. I think you, I think you, you were so close, Kyle. But I think uh, until you mentioned the world back to the Chromie and get her without saying, and now the tank is dead and now I'll go get the Chromie. I think you found it. I think there is a place for Rampage and it's front to back strategies. Maybe, but wouldn't you take Giant Slammer there? Depends on what the front is. Okay. It depends on what the front is. You know, Cause it's like, you think about something like Diablo, do you really need the help? Probably depends on your comp. Is the answer to that question? Mm, maybe, maybe, maybe not Sonya's job. Maybe Kyle. It depends. Maybe it does depend. Maybe it does depend. But maybe, maybe large blanket statements about all bruisers aren't a healthy thing to make. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why I was trying to keep it a little simpler by by invoking whirlwind. It's just like at a very simple, I think, game design level. One of these abilities makes it so she is no longer auto attacking, and I think that's like kind of where the inherent struggle or the inherent challenges of getting value out of Sonya auto attack talents. 
and my and as a non Sonya player, what I see could make this build go would be level seven. You've got Battle Rage, which gives you an instant heal of ten percent. Uh, you've got Life Funnel, which is very very popular, and then Poison Spear, which is a completely different direction, though can be extremely winning in a solo lane environment, and you know based on the healer on the enemy side. But if you replaced Poison Spear with a a, a, a healing blow talent that gave uh, your seismic slam some sort of health back now we might be doing that build we're looking for yes yeah it's, it's still it's just it's difficult you just you just want Sonya to be focused on getting a value out of their kit yeah not just landing auto attacks but um I love auto attacking and I can get down with a with a Twin Blades variant as much as the next person who loves dank memes. So I wouldn't be... <laughs> I'm glad that you have associated variants so deeply with the dankest of memes. Dude, I told you. You, uh, you need a Facebook account for no other reason than to join Heroes of the Storm Facebook account so you can just... Your Facebook feed can be nothing but Heroes of the Storm memes. All HOTS Facebook groups want to do is shit on Twin Blades variant. And it's so funny and entertaining little mean spirited but uh whatever but you you know what you did on it. you you could have been taunt right that's the that's the real reason this has elevated to such memory it you made a choice it, it's the nature of the hero right like yeah. there's no other hero in the game really that has that drastic of a role change based on a single talent decision and so the memes must flow sure I, actually i think uh i think Draken laser drill would be the other competitor. Really? Competitor. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you if you are if you're thinking, man, I'm taking a lot of damage, I should make a summon in this situation. <laughs> I I think Draken laser drill and Varian twin blades are best friends. I still want to get out when I see Draken laser drill. If I see if I see the the Thor come out, I'm like, oh, I can still get a kill by attacking that. I see the drill come out, I'm just like, oh, I should just walk away. Why should I give this any value? Maybe you haven't seen the drill target the wrong thing as much as I have. <laughs> Working on those lane minions, you know? I think Rainer players would make great Tychus drill players for that reason. Because uh, they know how <laughs> to target right. their Banshee. They know how to target That's their fair. Banshee. You know, go from, go from Tychus to go from Rainer to Tychus, not the other way. I mean, oh, you're already playing 4D chess, playing uh, Rexar, so Banshee's easy pickings for you. Oh, you're being too kind. I Actually, I disagree. How many times on this show have I been like, if I could change one thing in the game, it would be make the Banshee more responsive because I am garbage at controlling it because it's like a drunken Misha. But too many too many apples in the fall. Mm, mm, it happens. Like, yeah. like the noble Canadian moose. <laughs> <laughs> it's wintertime. You know, they're just about to go into hibernation. They're just getting a little sluggish. Yeah, just to, you know, and then those apples have been fermenting a little bit, and you got yourself a, a wandering bear. So instead of Misha charge, it's Misha saunter. That's the banshee. There you go. That's the banshee. It just saunters over when it feels like it. It's the, <laughs> it's the too cool for school teenage version of Misha. That's what it is. Just, nah. Uh, but I give the banshee a, a command, and it's just like, <sighs> do I have to? Holding its phone, watching YouTube, making its way through the grocery store. Yeah, I've seen them. I've yep. seen them. That's that's how the a banshee feels after controlling Misha. I had a Game Boy, so not like I was I was any different. Growing yeah, up. Same man, a little worm light. So I stayed in the car. The I thing. stayed in the car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had a Game Gear, which meant I I really couldn't uh, walk anywhere <laughs> because I was tethered to the wall because of how fast that damn thing sucked up batteries. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's one more hero that's getting changed, and it's uh, it's Thrall, Kyle. Okay. So, uh, according to the devs, uh, they said it's been a while since they've made any updates to Thrall that tracks. They said, uh, truth be told, his talents have been in a fairly healthy place, so we didn't see the need to make adjustments. Even so, we believe these changes will make his talents, uh, talent tiers more healthy and should incentivize some alternative ways to play him. Um, and so, yeah, we're getting some underpicked talent help here. Feral Resilience at level 4. The physical armor is being increased from 50 to 75. That is... That's a lot. Uh, level 13, Spirit Shield. The spell armor duration is being increased from one and a half to two and a half seconds. 
And uh, level 20 world breaker is having the cooldown reduction increase from 20 to 40 seconds. Ooh, I like that. I like a 100% increase on my cooldown reduction. Mm, what are we sitting at now? So we got sundering at 70 seconds, getting it down to 30 seconds, leaving a impassable rift blocking movement for three seconds. Mm -hmm. I have I have opinions. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do because you actually you actually play Thrall. Like I cannot remember the last yeah. time that I I picked Thrall outside of an Abraham. I real I love he is he is my favorite off tank in the game. He brings it. He brings really good damage, great poke, and when you need to execute a Diablo, you are the go to guy. But the te teams love him, and if you got a Diablo on your team, don't expect him to be peeling. It's going to be Thrall who's doing all the hard work in the back line, helping out everybody, poking down that Li Ming and keeping her off your various squishies. I think Thrall is an incredible kit, uh, though his win rate has been... Uh, let's, let's actually check it real quick, because for a while there, he was hovering near the bottom, he still is, uh, 47, that's not tragic. But he is definitely down there, uh, sporting alongside things like Chen and Urel, uh, Ana and Junkrat, so... You know, take it, take it with a grain of salt, of course, for your various leagues. Yeah, the, the one but I, is, but is, does Thrall bring as much as uh, Ana or Yorel with the goods? How do you mean? If you put as much time into becoming, you know, um, an Ana main or Yorel main, as, and you put, took that time and put it into the Thrall, would you be as effective? Would you bring as much to a team? That's a good point. Uh, they do very dramatic surprising things for those who are not prepared the, the surprise factor is certainly is certainly on their side uh thrall only 11 cent popularity but compared to things like chen and Urel with two percent three percent uh certainly having that bruiser that functions differently is going to be different i'm concerned about world breaker though i think it's a bit of a surprise mighty gust sort of situation to suddenly have impassable terrain at level 20 is when team fights are so important. <sighs> Coming from Dota, there was a character named Earthshaker who had this on his base kit that he would create a large, long line of impassable terrain. So because of that, my opinion will be changed. For me, I want to see the impassable rift part put at level 10 so I can become accustomed to it. My team can become accustomed to it before I have one fight to win the game. Mm. And the cooldown reduction is great. It's just too much of a shocker to say, I divided the enemy team, as you know. That's how it all has looked for a very long time. But now there's this additional part where if I don't hit it just right, I have saved the enemy team, just like our mighty gusts. That would... That to me strikes me though is a lot of power out of the gate ten. Compared to something like uh Earthquake, which is just so good at what it does for a team fight. And without the chaos, the without the uh, chance of mistake that Sundering brings. Yeah, even I guess that's without fair. the impassable terrain. And it's fair. I, from from coaching I've received uh, for our team play in the off lane, you should never ever do Sunder because Sunder's a solo league talent because Thrall wants to get kills because he doesn't trust the rest of his team. Earthquake is always the pick because everybody else gets the kills. You're empowering your team to succeed with a 50% slow in such a large area. Plus mm. the pulses, which are going to you know hook you up with all sorts of that 50 damage, which isn't a lot, but is also giving you those various things like uh, Frost Wolf Resilience. <laughs> and if you go Mana Tide... You, are now have, you now have the mana to maintain, to stay in the battlefield, to not be this burst one-trick pony, and then participate in the objective after you've won the team fight. And that's where I bring it back around to something like Feral Resistance, where I don't know if I can afford to lose mana tied at level four. I'm not quite sold yet. Well, uh, neither is anyone else, because Feral Resistance has an 11% popularity. And, and if I'm thinking like, man, I, I can hit every single... Feral, feral spirit i'm gonna go frost wolf pack in those extreme extremely rare scenarios but that's one of those talents where it's like uh, what's the pick rate on that one for me frost wolf pack 24 percent. okay that's actually surprisingly high because when it works it works it is great 
But I probably take it less than every fourth game. That kind of, I mean, it's, it's, it's basically at a quarter of the time. So that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, As, you know, to when, you, my when you framed giving Sundering the terrain at 10 against getting it picked over Earthquake, you, you piqued my interest. And it goes further, too, with something like Spirit Shield, which is another interesting scenario. Here, we've now put that duration to 2.5 seconds. But Frostwolf Grace is a heal on demand. And because I activate my Wind Fury, I don't hang out in Blizzards for very long on Thrall. I don't succumb to AoEs as often. It may be a, maybe like an extreme, like a Pyroblast scenario might be at work here. But hitting a heal would work in more scenarios than the pyroblast. Mm. So what I'm what I'm saying, I'm not I'm not I'm not trashing on these buffs. I think it's great to target thralls other areas. It's just very interesting that his kit makes up for and covers the reasons why you would pick these talents in the first place. Yeah, yeah. I mean, which has been a bit of a theme talking through these changes. That's a good point. Yeah, with Sonya and all. Yeah, Sonya, Brightwing. You know, what are we, what are we making up for? And are we, uh, are we not chasing the root of the issue? But, uh, interesting stuff here, Kyle, but that's the end of it. That's, uh, Thrall was the last change. So not a, a major patch in terms of overall balance updates, but we're getting a new freaking hero. So it's freaking Christmas in the Nexus, Kyle. Yes, it is. I just realized they're giving us a, uh, hero that, uh, gorges on meat on the week of, uh, American Thanksgiving. Yeah, get in that meat zone, you know? Mm-hmm. Get in the meat zone. <laughs> need a, uh, I need a talent on Hogger where he pulls out a recliner and uh, puts football on. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he does have the best dance since Deckard Cain in the I game. I haven't seen his dance. What is his dance? Oh, he does like a full-on like a uh, vaudeville, like ja- Hello My Baby kind of jazz oh, handsy dance. Oh, goodness gracious me. Wonderful. Ending with a big drama. But he also does, as you saw in the video probably, the taunt is legendary. The laugh slamming the fists on the ground. Mm-hmm. Oh, that, that, that is tilting. <laughs> tilting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, bring it on. Uh, I want to play Hogger against some real people. See how it goes. Oh, yeah. I want to add one more weird hero to my stable. Not a bad thing to have more bruisers in the world either. No, it uh, isn't. Incentivize people to cover some lanes. You know, help Are out. Are you saying the world could always use more bruisers? It could, unless we're running CCL comps, in which please pick a ranged assassin for me. <laughs> <laughs> fair. Very fair. But uh, we, we were actually asked about that, about the CCL, and if we feel this patch was influenced by it. I, oh, absolutely, yes. You know, when they say high-level play here in the dev comments, that's exactly where my mind goes. And I have no doubt that that's, uh, they did retweet by the way, you know, they're not on the launch or anything like that, but there was an official into the, or into the Nexus. Uh, here's the storm retweet of the CCL schedule going up. Yes. Yeah. I don't I, like, I wouldn't even know who to talk to anymore about, about launcher stuff. That was so <laughs> strictly uh, lashes baby. Yeah, it was it was a project that she she cared for dramatically, and I bet you it's probably like a sticky note somewhere buried deep in Blizzard where they gotta be like, does anyone have to log in? I don't even know how to tweet anymore. Who's gonna do this? And they have to like bring over a Hearthstone person, not not, not throwing shade or anything, but it, it it seems like it's an ordeal. And if I was you know design, it was arting all day, designing heroes, doing math. The last thing I want to be told by my superior is. Can you take care of a social media account for us? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh it's interesting. It, things have definitely changed. Um I mean, like from having a more kind of regimented and official point of contact to where like when we have devs on and whatnot, it's it's a lot more organic the way it comes about. So it's not necessarily worse or better. It's just different. Yeah. But I, I, I in the same breath we can say the freedom that the devs have to do something like this to say Shadowlands Day PTR. Like, and I streamed last night. And this game community is so in love with its game. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not blowing smoke here. I am dead serious. There was a world where, oh, you're not going to stream during X launch. You're not going to, 
You're not going to stream at the same time as so-and-so. People do not care. They want to digest. They want to Thanksgiving gorge themselves on Heroes of the Storm content. And it is awesome. And never once did we even consider that we were we were doing wrong by participating in a world with Shadowlands out. Mm. I mean, dude, that's kind of the story of us covering this uh, all ever since HGC, right? Because you and I panicked. We're like, crap, what do we do? This is a big part of the way we pay our bills. And uh, we got more listeners. Yeah, there's, there's a point, too, where you're just like, well, I'm still passionate, so I love the game, and I mean, let's see what happens. Yeah, it, it came, it, like, it, it, this is supremely oversimplifying what that time was like for us, but it came down to pretty much, well, do you still like playing the game? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you still want to mm-hmm. talk about it? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Well, I guess we're still doing the show. I can't, we'll just keep doing it until they, they say we can't anymore, I guess. That's, that's pretty much it is what it came down to. So there was a lot more personal turmoil. I was freaking out. <laughs> like I was sure, like, I'm yeah. going to have to go get another like standard date job. I don't know what I'm going to do. It was wild. It was, it, a wild it, was uh, it was new. You know, it, it was the free to play loot box thing was new. A, I mean, there, there are games now there. The, what was that? There's card games on steam that just, Go, well, Battleborn, right? Like the stuff just disappears. Yeah, you, man. You owned it. We were so just, stupid. We started an anthem show. It's it, it just gone. I mean, that's still around, and uh, they make promises and stuff. But you know, they, <laughs> they, things just anthem, disappear. The promise making game. <laughs> they make promises and things, and they just announced too. We're doing more Mass Effect. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I don't. And by the way, D- D- Dragon Age is still in development. I'm like, hey, yeah, enjoy yourselves. Okay. They can, you can, they can, they can do what they want. I'm, I'm uh, not interested until something is out. Yes, uh, trust us. I'm all for it, and I, and like I know these are teams made up of real humans uh, who probably busted their asses on. Uh, oh yeah, things like Andromeda and Anthem, but uh, oh boy, did Anthem mm. disappoint me. Mm-hmm. But you know what didn't? Hogger. Hogger. Hogger's great. Hogger did not disappoint me. I'm really excited to play Hogger. Um, and I'm excited to have a long weekend uh, in which to to play some games. So um, let's bring it. Let's bring it to the end here. I hope everybody has a great uh, Thanksgiving if you're here in the states and celebrating as such. Um, if nothing else, uh, your state friends are about to have a long weekend to play more games with you. So <laughs> exactly, get in the queue. Get in the queue. If you want to write in, if you want to be a part of Into the Nexus, you may do so at itncast at gmail dot com. If you're supporting us on Patreon, you can skip the inbox entirely and just. Talk to us right on there. We have a, a, a channel specifically for questions for the show that you can dump in there. And we'll uh, periodically pull them into the podcast. Um, speaking of our patrons, they are wonderful. They are awesome. They are supporting us and helping us pay our bills. Um, so if you'd like to be a patron, head on over to patreon.com slash I T N. Whatever works for you works for us. This, this, you don't have to give any certain amount uh, and you'll get access to our discord. You'll get to sign up for our game nights. It's a good time. Go check it out. Oh, well, next week even. Yes. Yes. ARAM, our first ever ARAM patron yes. game night. Yeah. Uh, huge thanks to our producers, by the way. Te- Declan H, Cheesy Bob, Chris K, Mike C, and Sean B. Thank you for the support, everyone. Uh, follow the show on Twitter at ITNCast to get, uh, get updates when we're going live, especially when we go live on an off day like this week. It worked out great. We were having a conversation last week. We were like, cool, crap. We usually do it on Thursday. Next week is Thanksgiving. Can we go early? Will there be enough to talk about? And then Hogger got announced. All good here. So here we find ourselves. Uh, but Kyle, before we go, where can people find you doing all of the other wonderful things that you do on the internet? You can find me over at KyleFerguson.com where you'll find links to everything I do. A uh, big 40-minute Hogger Explornasium is up over on the YouTube, youtube.com slash KyleFerguson if you want to see all the abilities played around with. But of course, I want to point you towards DMGI the Dungeon Master Learn to Play 5th Edition show for Dungeons and Dragons, which is in Season 7 right now and is about to post a video about writing lore. If you've ever written lore, it's actually harder than you think, and it's not just a timeline, so be sure to look up DM Gives Inspiration. Oh, thank God you spelled that out. I was about to go, Kyle, if I type in DMGI, am I going to find it? Because you better say the full name. 
I did. Uh, you know, it, you after you get past blockchain solutions, I, I think you'll you'll find it pretty quick. Okay. Okay. Sure oh yeah, blockchain. 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 Oh, it, uh, it, it's a stock market code. That's why. Oh, uh, okay. That's why. Well, luckily, it, that's this DMG. Uh, the I is for free, I guess. But you know, <laughs> go to DM gives inspiration folks. I'm Garrett art on Twitter. This podcast and every single other one that I produce can be found at amove.tv. TV. Uh, wow. Killer is back recording episodes. Talias and I talking about world of Warcraft since shadowlands just came out. You should probably go give that a look. Let's talk about star Wars is back and the anger chicken never went anywhere. Still going strong with uh, Hearthstone's new expansion last week. I am diamond three Kyle. I haven't been this high in a very, very long time in Hearthstone. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, that, Battlegrounds that whisked of... me away. I, I have I have definitely been treating standard like an also rand mode, and I just can't stop playing Totem Shaman. They made it insane and I love it. Is that so is is Diamond right on the edge of Masters and all that? Or it's right on the edge of, almost... of, of Legend, yeah, which is as high as Legend, you can Legend, Legend, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, it's 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 nutty for sure. So um, anyway, amove.tv for all my podcasts. Go check it out. And that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving week. And until next time, good luck, have fun, and uh, take a nap after your turkey. It's okay. Take a nap. <laughs>